Okay, more bleeding. Let's get into some hemoptysis, Jess. Okay, so some things about hemoptysis. So it's an unknown cause in about half of the cases. Um, infections, inflammatory conditions is about a quarter, and then cancer in about uh, 17%. So most of the time, the hemoptysis is self-limited. It's important to check again their medication list. You want to see if they're on anticoagulants. And for imaging, you can do a two-view x-ray to start, but most of these patients are getting a CT angio. This next one demonstrates some causes of hemoptysis. This is a great reference slide that you can look at, breaking it into the various categories of what can lead to that. All right. How about hemoptysis in international travel? So that's a pretty broad differential diagnosis. You have to think about things like PE, and then there's a whole host of pulmonary infections, including some bacterial infections like TB or histoplasmosis or schistosomiasis, viral pneumonias like dengue fever, uh, fungal infections, including histoplasma and aspergillus, or even helminthic infections like schistosomiasis. So this is an algorithm for non-massive hemoptysis treatment, and that would be considered less than 50 cc's per cough. So, you know, the way that I think about it is if you walk in and the patient's, you know, coughing up blood and you're like, oh, dear goodness, right, then this is probably not non-massive. So if you're freaked out, it's probably massive. And then with non-massive, these patients are going to get imaging, and then you can look, use this algorithm to determine if they need bronchoscopy. Let's talk about massive hemoptysis. So massive hemoptysis is generally defined as greater than 50 mLs per cough, 100 mLs in an hour, 600 mLs in 24 hours, or it scares you. If you're fearful of the amount, I think it's safe to say it's probably massive hemoptysis. To oxygenate these patients, you want to put the bleeding side down if you know where it's coming from. Remember, the tracheobronchial tree only holds about 150 mLs, so a patient can really quickly drown in their own hemoptysis. They often need intubation. Sometimes you have to selectively intubate one bronchus in order to allow aerated lung. And bronchoscopy is helpful. It's both diagnostic and can permit treatment because we can put a bronchial blocker down uh, and temporize bleeding to allow time for IR treatment or surgery. Here's an algorithm that might be helpful just looking at massive hemoptysis and what you do with these folks.